Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. And in advance, I wanted to apologize for this clickbait title. If I was able to title this video like I wanted it to, it would have been automatically deranked, hurt in the algorithm, and maybe even censored by YouTube. And it's really this new YouTube algorithm that is causing these massive generalizations. Because if I could, I would have titled this video, Why China and Russia Have Publicly Announced That They're Preparing for War. And that's why in this video, I not only want to go into great detail about these public announcements that were just made by China and Russia, but also the larger Tisidious trap that is happening on the geopolitical spectrum. All the foreign policy analysis that, of course, you will not get in the U.S. mainstream media because I do believe that we are on the verge of something major. Now, before we start, you should know that we are a fully independent news organization. And with your support through our t-shirt store, teesprings.com forward slash we are change, which of course will be in the description of this video, helps us exist as an independent news source that of course does not cater to any bigger political agenda here. Now, I do believe that we are on the cusp of something major happening in this world right now, mainly because of the correlation between war and censorship. And I don't think there's any denying this, but in the United States, we have seen the ramping up of censorship, especially online. And as former General William Westmoreland said, Vietnam was the first war fought without any censorship. Without censorship, things can get terribly confused in the public mind. And in Western countries, we have seen recently big tech monopolies like Facebook recently purge and delete accounts linking back to Iran. We have seen YouTube delete the accounts of Syrian state television as well as other, as well as other independent users giving people the other side of the story in Syria. All the while, countries that are aligned with the United States, like Israel, are given the right to actually censor what we see online. This, of course, is also happening with Saudi Arabia, not only with billions of dollars into the U.S. tech industry, but the tech industry following suit and deleting accounts that are critical of them, and, of course, their gross human rights violations. We have seen Russia phobia being spread all over the mainstream media, causing, of course, hysteria and trying to position the American people against Russia, which which even on their basic principles has failed because there hasn't been any proof of Trump-Russian collusion at all. And if you look at the bigger geopolitical picture, the United States and Russia are more at odds than ever in recent decades. And it's not just the geopolitical enemies of the United States that are being censored on social media, but it's also alternative media, which has been mainly critical against the establishment and also fiercely anti-war. And while many channels have already been deleted, others are being hit with algorithm changes, which of course makes them a target and limits the reach that they're able to have. All of which, of course, we have faced very severely here on this YouTube channel. Mainly, of course, for reporting on the truth of what's happening geopolitically. And this is why this ramping up of censorship should be concerning to a lot of people, especially with what's happening with the rest of the world. Because it is definitely not a pretty picture that is evolving right now, especially with the tensions between China, Russia, and the United States. As the U.S. Vice President Mike Pence said earlier this month, that China is weaponizing on a massive scale, and that, quote, using that stolen technology, the Chinese Communist Party is turning plowshares into swords on a massive scale. This with Donald Trump announcing just 10 days ago that the United States would withdraw from the 1987 Treaty on Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces or Nuclear Weapons with Russia has definitely ramped up the tensions with these countries to where the Chinese president even announced and publicly told the Chinese military to concentrate preparations for fighting a war. With this statement just being made yesterday, as Russia three days ago announced a similar move with a Russian foreign minister coming out and saying, quote, we are preparing to defend our homeland, our territorial integrity, our principles, our values, our people. And of course, with all of this news coming in, a lot of the people who are paying attention are asking the question, is war inevitable? And trying to bring some sense into this actual topic and not just hyperbolic fear mongering, we do have to understand on one hand that war is historically what humanity has been going through and it is a trend 
while also on the other hand we have to understand that the threat of war is also a massive geopolitical tool that of course countries will use to galvanize a better position for them and the geopolitical situation between china and the united states is especially interesting since of course china is working to become a world power and wants to be recognized as such while the united states is seeing that as a threat to their hegemony that they have in the world now, of course, all the countries that I'm mentioning here, China, Russia, and the United States, don't want war because it would lead to mutual annihilation. All the countries understand that. But currently existing and living in what we are seeing unfold as a Tacitus trap with a rising power coming into play challenging the top power the United States we have to understand historically there is a lot of room for concern here and at least something to keep a careful eye on and to understand what is actually happening which the media doesn't do a good job at at all and of course the United States is taking the threat against its hegemony very seriously as the United States just completed its largest shipment of ammo to Europe since 20 years ago as the United States with NATO is conducting more military exercises right on Russia's border which of course is escalating the situation in that region and it needs to be understood here as Zero Hedge asks why American leaders persist in waging losing wars and that is very simply the fact that if you have a hammer every problem starts looking like a nail and the hammer representatively to the United States is of course its record military spending which they outspend the world on and that's why we have seen an increased heated rhetoric towards Iran by the United States with of course Iran being a major producer of oil and also being mainly against the US petrodollar and as well as close allies to Russia and China and if these wars are going to be fought in one way or another we do have to understand here it won't be done because of human rights or spreading democracy like the US mainstream media likes to tell us all these wars that the US is involved in is for but it will be for geopolitical power for natural resources the US petrodollar hegemony power and control which historically speaking is why wars have always been fought but if you still watch the mainstream media you still think it's about spreading democracy and and freedom to Syria and Iraq and to Libya and to Afghanistan which is exactly not the picture unfolding in those places right now and it's not just the physical war that we have to look out for during these situations but it's also the cyber war that's happening the buildup of the space forces and military forces in space the race towards artificial intelligence and most importantly also the trade wars which the United States and China are embarked in right now and Donald Trump is playing a very key active role in even just today banning state-owned Chinese chip makers to do trade inside of the United States and of course China is also retaliating against the United States but with their ambitions they have a lot of hurdles that they have to go through as a country China is growing very dramatically economically but also at the same time is facing a huge problem with its debt just like the United States and also has major issues that they have to deal with when it comes to food and energy security that's why China's ambitions to be a world power are being met with a lot of major economic moves that they're making investing almost 1.3 million dollars for a new Silk Road which would expand their trade routes to over 76 countries and try to dominate the United States in global trade and at the same time deal with their food and energy security issues this is also why China is trying to compel the largest oil producer in the world Saudi Arabia to trade their oil in yuan instead of the US petrodollar we have also seen a very similar attempt made by Russia and that's why trade between Russia and China grew 30 percent just this year alone and they are politically and militarily being on the same page when it comes to geopolitical issues the countries that they align with and simultaneously questioning the US power structure and we have already seen China undermine US economic interests in many different ways but now they are taking their approach globally to places like Central America and Africa 
ultimately developing what could be called a new form of colonialism as they are putting a blind eye to human rights, giving out low interest loans, and gobbling up the world's natural resources so they could be economically dominant over the United States and be seen as a world power. But honestly speaking, just from my analysis alone, the Chinese do have a very long way to overcome their hurdles, and with major debt plus poor economic outlook, it really does not look like a reality that could be met. But at the same time, the whole world stage is very unstable because of this economic factor. Because if you look into things, you would understand that the United States is in debt to China to the tune of $1.2 trillion. With the countries being economically connected to each other, what is ultimately unfolding here is a very dangerous game where, because of the tensions between these two, all the cards could come down. And this is something, of course, that the United States has been preparing for and knows the clear objective threats that China poses to their world hegemony. And that is why the United States has over 400 military installations all around China and even more surrounding Russia. With that fact and others, with these world powers being against each other on so many different levels, it definitely doesn't seem like an easy resolution is at hand. But when and if something will happen, no one really knows. But you at least should be aware of the current situation that is unfolding in our world right now. And that's why I made this video. If you disagree with anything that I said, please click the subscribe and notification button. I always talk to my audience one hour after the video is out. If you appreciated this broadcast, share it with your friends and family members. Once again, thank you for all the people who are donating and buying t-shirts. Without you, I wouldn't be here. And that's why... I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more.